Hello everyone, Glory here. It's good to be here again and to come with another exciting topic that I'm sure when you know what this topic is about, you'd love to dive in, you'd love to listen in and start to put the tips I'm going to be sharing with you into practice because this is something that affects a lot of people and I'm sure you would want to know what to do, practical steps on how to get over loneliness and overwhelm. So today I'm looking at how to overcome loneliness and overwhelm. But first, let me talk a bit about what qualifies me to teach you this topic. As you know, some of you who have listened to me a few times would know this already, but I'm going to go over this again. I'm a wife, mother, a Christian. I coach women. I'm an empowerment coach. I'm a qualified secondary school teacher. I host my own podcast and I have my own YouTube channel as well as I've been an author. I am an author. I have three books um, written. One um, book and two study guides, actually, two educational study guides. Okay, they are all available on Amazon. I'm a speaker. I hold women's events. I organize women's events and conferences, my own, and I'm also a consultant. Right now, I feel very confident and I'm bold in everything I do. Everything is amazing. I'm loving the new me you know, that I see today, but it's always, it hasn't always been like this, <laughs> you know. If you had met me a few years ago, you'd have met someone completely different. I felt like I had no voice. I was extremely shy at crossroads sometimes about steps to take in fulfilling my dreams, you know, how do I go about fulfilling my dreams? What do I do? I had so many ideas in my head. Which one do I start with? Do I start with this idea, you know, or that idea or the other idea? I felt lost. As a Christian, I prayed, but sometimes I still felt hopeless. That when am I going to get answers to these questions I have in my, in my mind? You know, things were not working as I had hoped. You know, almost lost faith sometimes. Like, oh God, where are you? You know, I felt lonely. I no one to talk to who I felt would understand what I was going through. You know, I wanted to make a difference. But how? I always asked, how was I going to go about this? I had lots of limiting beliefs. I tried different businesses, you know, I'll try this one, abandon it, I'll try the next one, you know, I'll leave it. I wasn't sure how my dreams were going to come to pass. I had no clear vision. You know, I would have a friend say, oh, I'm into this business now and it's making a lot of money. I'm like, really? Show me, you know, and then do it for a few months and then leave it all while I was teaching. You know, I was teaching, secondary school teacher, but I always believed in having multiple streams of income. So even though I was teaching, I still, you know, had little businesses on the side. And I felt, look, I had lost, it seemed as if I had lost my identity. And I was like, what is going on? Glory, you better calm down, <laughs> reevaluate things and see, you know, what to do next. So that's why having been through all that, that is why I am now on a mission. And I'm so passionate about helping women overcome their blocks and limiting beliefs in order for them to find their true voice and build their vision, life, and the businesses of their dreams. You know, I'm here to help you whatever your vision is, your mission, to help you fulfill your dreams on the way to fulfilling your God-given passions, visions, and dreams. Having been through all that I have been through, this is now my purpose. 
I'm now aligned with my purpose that yes, this is what I'm meant to be doing. And I'm so happy, I'm so glad to have finally found my God-given purpose, my passion. So it is possible to dream and fulfill whatever God has put in your heart. It's possible. You may, you may think it's too late. It's never too late. You can be transformed into a confident leader in your own sphere of influence. You don't, like, you don't have to change if you don't want to. You don't have to change, you know, move around like I did. Start this, stop it, start that. You don't have to do that. But if you need to change, why stop? If you need to leave what you're doing and make a change, it's up to you. As long as you are aligned with your purpose, that's what matters. Okay? So how do you get over loneliness and overwhelm? On the way to achieving your purpose, certain blocks will arise. Different things will come up to challenge you. Like I've shared with you earlier, the various challenges I went through, I've given you a snippet of, it, of them. You know, things like loneliness can come in, overwhelm can come in. That's why it's very important to identify what these problems are in order for you to nip them in the bud. Otherwise, they will prevent you from fulfilling or discovering that purpose God has given to you. If you spend all your energy, you know, thinking about your problems, oh, I'm lonely, oh, I'm overwhelmed, I can't manage this. You never have the breathing space. You never have the air to finally see that this is your purpose. This is what you're meant to be doing because you are weighed down with problems. So it's important to identify and reduce or eliminate these problems, these problems that come up in order for you to make progress. Okay? So I'm going to be sharing some tips now. I have a few tips written down. I think I have about nine tips I'm going to be sharing with you today. Once you start to put these tips into practice, one by one, you will find that, that you become a new person. You become different in the way you do things and in the way you think. Tip number one, belief system. Okay, the belief system you have, if it's not changed, if you have a negative belief system, this can hold you back. All right, negative thoughts, negative emotions. And why? How do you get this type of belief systems from your environment, the way you are brought up, what you hear being said around you? you know, what you are taught, maybe at school, and then you grow up with these limiting beliefs. Maybe you grew up in a home where you were never appreciated. You might grow up to feel, hmm, nobody loves you. You may grow up to feel you're not worthy of anything. So there are lots of limiting beliefs that hold people back. If they are not changed, it becomes impossible to make progress and move on. All right, that's things like fear. If you grew up in an environment where there was a lot of fear and anxiety and all of that, it becomes part of you. Without you realizing it, it, it takes root in your subconscious. And then everything you do, you do out of fear, you know, anxiety, and you don't seem to understand why. It's because of your limiting beliefs, your belief system. So it's always important to identify where this is coming from. If you find that you're always lonely, even when you have people around you or you're always overwhelmed, you can't seem to get your head above water, it's time to sit down, reflect, and find out where that is coming from in order to deal with it. Tip number two. I'm going to be sharing with you today, you need to prioritize. Once you start feeling overwhelmed, it's because you're trying to do too many things. And overwhelm comes in. Remember, whatever you focus on, 
gets bigger. Once you focus on being overwhelmed, it begins to expand and everything you do, you will feel overwhelmed at all times. So it's important to prioritize what am I going to be doing first. You wake up, make a list of the things you want to do. Guess what? At the end of the day, if you're not able to accomplish everything on your list, it's not the end of the world. Don't beat yourself up because you were not able to finish everything on your list. Remember, you are only human. Give yourself a break, okay? Give yourself a break. Ask yourself, why are you feeling this way? Remember, you have to identify where it came from. Once you have identified it, now change. For example, if you feel you are um, focusing so much on being too busy, or you have to be a mom, you know, you have to be the teacher, you have to be the one who makes the food, you are the one who cleans the home, you are the one who does the shopping, and you just begin to feel like the weight of it is going to crush you. Start to prioritize. This day, I'm going to do this. If you can't multitask and it, you know, you are overwhelmed, Give yourself plan days when you are going to assign or allocate to certain tasks. Okay? And then begin to reflect on what you want to see happen in your life instead. Just take time, sit back, take in some deep breaths, breathe in, breathe out, relax your shoulders, relax the muscles around your face. Take some time, just reflect. What do I want to see? What type of life do I want to have? And then imagine a life where there's no overwhelm. All you have is peace around you. Begin to reflect, begin to think on, on that. And then watch as peace envelops you instead of overwhelm. Let peace expand instead. Focus on peace and peace will expand around you and you find out that you have a clearer head to think, a clearer head to decide what you want to do first on your list and then walk all the way down your list. That way overwhelm is reduced or even as you put this into practice, overwhelm becomes eliminated. Yes, that's possible. It is a possibility. So let's move on to tip number three. The third tip is for you to receive help. When help is offered to you, learn to receive it and just say thank you. Be grateful. Say thank you. Don't say, if someone says, oh, can I help you with shopping today? Say, oh, don't say, oh, no, no, don't worry. It's fine. I can handle it. You know, because within you, you feel as a woman, you should be able to take care of the house, take care of your children, be there for your husband, your partner. You know, you feel you should be able to do all those things because if your mom could do it, why not you? That's your belief system. Or if my grandmom, after all, my grandparents never had help. They did everything themselves. You know, nobody helped them. So you have that belief system that as a woman, it's your responsibility to make sure everyone else is fine. What about you? It's good to have, you know, everyone's interest at heart, but what about you? So if someone comes around and says, can I help you? Can I say, oh, yes, please. Tell them what they can help you with. Get your husband, get your children involved in the home. It depends on how old your children are. If you have grown children, teenagers, get them out of their rooms. Let them help with things around the home. Receive help. It's very important for your peace of mind. You need to learn to receive 
help. When you receive help, it eases things for you. You know, and you stop being as overwhelmed as you've always been. Okay? So tip number four, it's good to go out, get some exercise, go for a walk, get some fresh air in. Most times when people go for, for a walk, they get, the, it, is, it is proven that you are able to think better. Clarity comes in because you are exercising. Some people as they exercise, that's when they are able to make plans and all of that. However, going out for exercise gives you clearer mind. You know, it helps, it keeps your body moving. Go for a walk. Um, practice gratitude. As you are going for a walk, think about things that you are grateful for. As you are doing your exercise, whatever form of exercise it is you love to do, dancing, walking, you know, aerobics in your home or out, outside of the home, as you do it, let your mind reflect on things that you are grateful for. What are you grateful for today? Just let your mind go to a place outside of the stressful situation you find yourself in. Think, what am I grateful for today? Make a note of those things mentally. Once you are done with your exercise, you can write them out in your journal. And before you know it, you have a lot of things written down that you are grateful for. And once you put this into practice, watch as your heart warms up. You know, you ha your heart warms up. Even you have a smile on your face and you're like, wow. So I, I have all this. It dawns on you that, wow. And it helps you see, put things in perspective. Exercise, going for a walk, putting things in writing, being grateful and all of that. It just helps you to relax a bit more. Okay, so let's move on to tip number five, which is the ability to delegate. Remember earlier, I said receive help, but this time you are intentionally going to delegate tasks. Again, delegate to anyone around you, your husband, your children, call on friends, just ask. There's no harm in asking. Okay, you are the mom, you are the wife, you are the business owner, you are the coach, you are the speaker, you are the author, everything. And sometimes you sometimes feel you have to put on all these hats and get things done perfectly. That's why it's difficult to receive help because your your um, belief system feels you, thinks that you have to be strong to get all these things done. Are you surprised that overwhelm comes in? If you work on your on your own, you work from home, you get lonely because there's no one to talk to, there's no one to share your burdens with, there's no one to to rub minds with. However, if you start asking for help, you'll be surprised that there's so many people out there that will be willing and happily help you. You know, once you ask your children, okay, I'd like you to do this, you do that, and all of that, they will. Ask your partner, they will as well. So delegate, don't think it has to be perfectly done the way you'd always do them. You have to get that it's important to get that out of your mind. Delegate, give instructions on how you'd like it to be done, okay? And then receive once it, once it is done. Receive it with gratitude. You can always make change, changes. You can always tweak it, but it cuts your work in half when you delegate. Get help. You need your home cleaned and you can't because you are busy. There are cleaners out there you can employ. You can save towards getting a cleaner to help you clean your home. Okay, some, I've seen some friends who also get people to cook their meals. 
because there's there are so many hearts they have so many hearts to put on and overwhelm has taken over so they've had to delegate and no one is going to judge you no one is going to say how come you are giving all these jobs out to other people aren't you a woman no it's not anybody's business how you want to live your life it's important to have all this in mind okay in order to get rid of overwhelm and loneliness being by yourself and trying to do everything on your own, superwoman, it's a lonely place. It's a lonely world when you feel you can do everything by yourself and not communicating how you feel with others. Now, tip number six is about rest. Learning to relax. You wake up, you're on the go. From the minute you wake up till the, the second you go to bed. It's, in, it's non-stop. So I'm advising you now, take a moment during your day to relax. It doesn't mean you have to go to sleep. Re relaxing or resting doesn't always mean sleep. Sleep is good. Make sure you have your eight hours sleep in the night where possible. That is very good. It's important to balance things out. But finding time to rest during the day, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just rest mentally. Okay, apart from the of, of apart from physical rest, you, you have to rest mentally as well. Take your eyes off technology, sit back, and just give yourself 10 minutes to breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in again. Breathe out. Do that several times. And just watch as your whole body relaxes. Once you've given yourself that space to practice that breathing in and out technique, technique then you can go back again to your work. And you will find out that by the end of the day, you are more relaxed and not as overwhelmed as you would normally be. It's important to always find a balance and not to work all the time. Find a balance. I'm not saying don't work. Remember that work is good, but find a balance. We have to balance things out. It's very important. Okay. Tip number seven is about staying aligned to your values. The values, whatever your values are, helps you to make better decisions. What value systems do you have? What's important to you? Truth, you know, your faith, honesty, integrity, openness, you know, um, energy, whatever value system you hold that's important to you would help you make better decisions. Roy E. Disney say, said, it's not hard to make decisions once you know what your values are, which I totally agree with. Once you know what your values are, it's, it makes it easier to decide and know what it is you are meant to be prioritizing what you're meant to be doing you know you become aligned to your truth for example when i um, wanted to become as i became a coach and i wanted to like start releasing my training and documents out there and you know my website i had to take a step back to think about my values what, what's What's important to me? At first, I wanted to coach without um, faith. is very important to me, my faith as a Christian. And I tried coaching without um, being true to who I am in terms of bringing my Christian values into my coaching. And I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy coaching that way. And then I took a step back and I said, how am I going to move forward with this coaching business that I'm doing? 
and then I decided to be true to my faith. So now when I speak to women, I always bring in my faith. As soon as I did that, I became aligned with my purpose. And I'm like, yes, I'm going to, every time I talk to women, every time I talk to anyone, I must bring in my faith, what I believe in, because I draw from that in helping women get transformed and helping them see changes happening in their lives. So for me not to walk according to my truth would have mean I wasn't um, owning my identity or who I am in Christ. You know, so as soon as I did that, everything changed. So once you are aligned with your values, you know what, what's important to you. It also helps you to reduce overwhelm because you're not trying to impress anyone. You're not trying to be like other people. You are being yourself and it simplifies things as well as eases things, you know, around you. It really does because I've experienced it. That's why I know. That's why I can teach this to you. All right. Now, tip number eight is about making connections. Making connections. This is very important. No man is an island. You need to connect with people that inspire and motivate you. Connect with great friends. Never connect with people that will bring you down and tell you you're not good enough. Connect with people that you know when you're around them, you feel motivated to even do better. You feel motivated to be a better version of yourself because you are speaking truth to one, to one another and you are loving on each other and you are encouraging. You feel encouraged. You encourage them, they encourage you. Even if it's um, you are connecting via technology as we are doing now, it's important because you're not on your own and trying to deal with everything on your own. You're able to draw from each other and just the you know, friends you can be vulnerable with and just talk. And when you're down, they can get you out in no time just by saying something funny. And before you know it, you're out of that miserable place. So it's important to connect with friends with people that inspire you. It doesn't have to be only um, people around you. Your bi you, know, you can connect with people in the business world as well. If you're a business owner, look for people who you can learn from. You, know, you can exchange resources with people who, you, maybe a coach, you want to, fight, you want to um, know how to do something and you can exchange ideas with another coach, with another consultant, with another business person, and you just rub minds together, it helps you and you feel, wow, it takes the load off. And if you're a mom, you can, if you're a mom who stays at home, you can connect with other moms, get your children to play together and share experiences and things like that. That's really important in order for you not to feel like everything, the problems of this world are on your shoulders. Okay. Tip number nine. What I would say here is never compare with other people. Don't say, how come they're able to do this and I can't? Remember, we are all on a journey. It's not a race, by the way. Nobody's looking for who is going to win. It's not a race. Life is like a marathon, okay? It's not a race. It's not a 100-meter race where you feel you have to com you know, compete with the next person and beat them, um, win. So, so <laughs> you know, you want to get ahead of everyone else. That's not life. So don't copy. I've never had the person personality that um, envies people. That's something that I love so much. If I'm saying so about myself, <laughs> yes, but that's true. I don't envy people. I 
I may appreciate what I may say, oh, that's good. I may congratulate you, but never to envy or compare myself. That's something that I'm grateful for every day. I'm somebody who is content with what I have, and I am grateful to God every day. I say, God, I thank you for what you've blessed me with. You know, I give God praise for what he's done and all that. But never, I never look at that, someone else and say, wow, why don't I have what they have? Why is my business not like theirs? Why, uh, you know, no, I don't. Comparison is a great killer. So don't compare yourself with anyone. We all have um, different lanes in life. On your way, you, you meet different people. Help one another where possible. Okay, don't compare. Once you compare, it takes your focus off what you're meant to be doing and overwhelm kicks in. Once you start to compare, loneliness can also kick in because you're not able to share how you feel with other people. You keep it within you and it's, it is a lonely place when that happens. So it's good to be open, love other people for what, who they are, what they have, bless them, thank God for them, but then appreciate, you know, be grateful for what you have. As you are grateful for what you have, you are blessed with more. There's a saying that gratitude leads to altitude. I can't remember where I saw that, but I've never forgotten it. Gratitude leads to altitude. The more you are grateful, the more you are lifted up. So take your eyes off other people, what they have, what you don't have yet, and all of that. You never know. Things can change. Life, things can change in a second. Twinkle of an eye. You never know tomorrow how blessed you're going to be and you're able to, going to be able to bless others. Never compare your talents or where you are now with somebody else. Be grateful. So those are the tips I'm sharing today. What I would like you to do is share this video with your friends, tag them, like the video, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, share this video because I would like as many people to listen to this video, to just listen to the tips I've shared. It will help you greatly if you can put one or two or even all of the tips into practice. It will be awesome. Share, tag your friends, press the notification bell. There's a bell on YouTube on, to, on the right side. To, I think it's to the right side of YouTube, yes. Click on the bell. When you, once you click on that bell, it helps you get um, notifications of all my new videos. So every time I post a new video, you will be notified by, new, by YouTube and then you can check them out, all right? Support me, share with your friends, tag them, like my videos, subscribe, watch the videos. I would really appreciate that. Now to work with me, I have a website. It's called gloriousglowempowerment.com. Go on to the work with me section and you will find all the courses I have to offer. Remain, also, I have um, a 30 minutes discovery call, which is a free half an hour call you get with me. Okay, I'll listen to, to you and then I'll see if we'll both see if we are a good fit for each other and then we can get started after the half hour call. It's called the 30 minutes discovery call. To book that, go onto my website as well and you'd see the section that says discovery call. Click on it and it takes you straight to my calendar and then we can have a phone call. I would love to hear from you. Now, what do you get when you come onto my, any of my courses? You'd have exclusive access to my membership area, which has courses covering different topics to help you. It will help you, all my courses help, help you get on stock from all the limiting beliefs and whatever else is making you feel stuck at the moment. 
okay? And my course is to help propel you into your purpose. That's what I am about, helping you discover your God-given purpose, to discover your dream, what your passion is, and all of that, all right? Now, most of my courses are for a minimum of three months. We work together for a minimum of three months, by which time you would be, you know, your foundation would be very strong and the transformation that would take place would be amazing. You'd also get unlimited email or Voxer access to me. Voxer enables you to contact me anytime and I can respond immediately. Okay? Yeah, you leave a voicemail on Voxer and I can get to you immediately or you get unlimited email access to me at any time. In addition to this, I would also have a weekly face-to-face -face, face -face call with you where we go over what you've done and all of that, where you have, if you have questions, and then I would also do some training as well. You'd have access to my glorious journal. I have produced a journal in the form of an e-book You'd have access to that as well as the workbook that comes with the journal. I do a lot of meditations, okay, Christian mindfulness. You will be getting access to various meditation recordings, all right, to help you along the way. You'd have access to meditation recordings, which is very good in order to help your mind to change your thought pattern. I also have podcasts. You'd have access to all my podcasts and my YouTube videos to help you, to keep you motivated. Anytime you can listen to either my podcasts or watch my YouTube videos just to keep you motivated because I share different topics to help you get unstuck. You get invaluable support to help you along the way. Okay, The support I give you will be invaluable anytime you need help with any anything you get in touch with me through the methods I, I shared earlier and we'll make sure you are able to take steps to help you towards achieving your purpose i will be your accountability partner on this journey remember no one is an, an uh, no one is an island sometimes you need someone just to shove you and say hey keep moving, don't stop. So I will be your accountability partner. As well as I have a community of like-minded women, I will make sure you are added to that community. So you can lean on these women along the way. You can post in the group and get support and things like that. All right? That's the plan. Those are the things you will get when you come onto any of my courses to work with me. And your results, what, what, what kind of results are you going to see at the end of this? As soon as these steps are put in place, the steps I've just shared, or the steps you will get when you come onto my courses, you will be well on your way to overcoming loneliness and overwhelm, okay? There's no point listening to this only and not taking action. It's important to take action. If you want to overcome loneliness and overwhelm, you need to put the work in place. That is very important. No one can do this for you. You have to do this for yourself. That's why I will be your accountability partner to make sure you are making progress along the way. Now, let me remind you you may know this already, and if you don't, I will be sharing two Bible verses with you. Okay, 1 Peter 5, 7, which says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. He doesn't want you to carry all these burdens, loneliness, and overwhelm. He wants you, God wants you to cast it all on him because he cares for you and doesn't want you to be stressed out. Also, Philippians 4, 6 to 7 says, 
do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Okay? Don't be anxious about anything, but pray about everything. While you are praying, be thankful. Remember, I said don't compare. Be thankful instead. As you are being thankful, let your requests pour your heart to God. He wants to know. He wants to know what's in your heart. Okay? Pour your heart to him. He doesn't want you to be lonely. He doesn't want you to be overwhelmed. It is time, ladies. Let us take the steps. It is time to be who God has created you to be. Loneliness and overwhelm will only keep you down. All right? So, I will be leaving my link in the description box how you can um, get the 30 minutes discovery call. That's a free half an hour call with me. And how you can book and come on these courses I've just spoken about. All right? This, um, I'll be posting this video. This is free. You can listen to this and start taking action. All right? And then you can come on to my course, work with me for three months for us to see progress and great transformation take place in your life. Click on it. Once you see the link, click on the link, register on the course, and let's get started. All right? Remember the free half an hour call you can book with me before you commit. You don't have to commit on the course immediately. Book the half hour call. Let's chat. Let's see if we're a good fit for each other and then we'll take it from there. I look forward to seeing you. Thanks for listening. Remember to share, tag your friends, um, subscribe to my channel. God bless you as you do so. Thank you once again for listening. Take care and God bless you. Bye.